Hallelujah. And all the glory does belong to our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's lovely to see the house filling up this Lord's Day evening, see the nights dropping, it's getting dark earlier, um, but it's good to see this crowd gathered in the name of the Lord. A lady phoned me early this morning, and uh, she, she didn't just give me her first name, I don't know who she is, but she said her family's gone through a lot of trouble, and the weak chorus that has been sustaining them is, in Jesus' name we press on. And she said, at some stage today, Pastor, could we sing that just in the sanctuary with God's people? So we're going to do that just now, because if it blesses you, wherever you are tonight in your family, then that's what we're going to do. We're going to worship the Lord. And that's what we all need to do. We all need to press on in Jesus' name. In the good times and in the bad times, praise Him, because He's no disappointment, and He always brings us through, and we're able to stand and worship Him. Then, Okay, in Jesus' name. We press on. Let's sing it then. Pastor Irwin's going to come and lead us in our opening hymn. Praise the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord. Let us extend a warm welcome again to each and every one that's in the tabernacle this evening. And sincerely to those that's here for the first time, we pray that you receive a blessing as you join with us in our worship and also the precious word of truth. Not forgetting our friends logged on this evening live all over the world, depending on this service that they also will receive a blessing from God's precious Word. I want to sing an old hymn this evening. We haven't sang this for quite some time. If you're using a hymn book, it's 457. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, trust and obey, for there's no other way. There's the words on our screens. So let's everyone please stand in the house and let's worship the Lord Jesus Christ then. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory is in our head. I feel His good will, He abides with us still.
lovely name. If you have an unspoken request, please raise your hand and indicate before the Lord, and we'll remember you in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we count it a lovely privilege to come before thy throne of grace. And Father, it's what we've just sang, to trust and obey, for there's no other way. We trust you. We love you. We depend on you. And we look to you again this evening. And Father, looking at your Son, we remember the cross. We remember his precious shed blood that meets our every need. No matter who we are this evening, no matter what we're going through tonight, you see us. And Father, you can meet us. You can touch us. You can heal us. You can save us. You can set us free. And grant tonight before we leave this building, the house of God, hearts will be touched at the presence of the Lord. Will you anoint your servant afresh? May there be a stillness and a hush of God in this place as the sacred scriptures are read and opened that, Lord, your word that runneth swiftly will touch the unsaved tonight the prodigal tonight and the cold and indifferent tonight, that you will save precious souls. Bless the group as they minister, the choir as they minister. Lord, just tonight we commit the service to you because we ask it in the lovely name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory. Amen. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated then, Pastor McConnell. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see folks still coming. And just right now, before we give the announcement, Simple Faith is going to sing to us and minister to us. Let's welcome them, Simple Faith. Thank you.
Thank you, choir. That was lovely. Let's show them our appreciation once more. (coughs) Will you turn to the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, please? The fourth chapter of Matthew's Gospel. We will read the first 11 verses. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. 
And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up. That's something that, oh, it has gripped me for years. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, actually 46 feet. Mm. There, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And may the Lord tonight bless this record of his impeccable Son. Father, we ask you now to shut each and every one in this great congregation in with yourself. And we ask you that the Holy Spirit will move from seat to seat and from heart to heart, that he will give this congregation understanding and enlightenment, and that the Holy Spirit shall convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come, and that men and women shall be brought into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's verse 9 <clears throat> that I want especially to bring to your attention tonight. It says, The devil saith unto him, All these things will I give you, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. We have to note where this battle took place. It took place in the wilderness, between Jerusalem, which stands on the central plateau, which is the backbone of Palestine and the Dead Sea, there stretches this wilderness. It actually stretches over an area of 35 by 15 miles. In that wilderness, Jesus could not be more alone than anywhere else in Judea. And it was there Satan came to test and try and torment the young prince of glory. It's to be remembered that our Lord had just begun his ministry, and he was 30 years of age. So our text reads in verses 8 and 9, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now many Puritans believe, and I believe myself, there is reason to believe that this might have been the most dangerous of all the devil's suggestions. He was fully aware of the Lord's intention to rescue a sinful world. But he also knew the cost 
which would be paid ere the final triumph was won. Jesus would have to endure crucifixion. His followers would also become martyrs for their cause. And long before the task of evangelization was completed, millions of souls would die in their sin. Every part of the world would become a battleground, and every inch would be contested. Satan would never withdraw without a fight. Jesus had decided to walk the most difficult road ever known to man. And then suddenly, Satan offered to make the task very easy and very simple. He suggested that there was no need for the cross, no need for struggle and pain. Jesus, thou Son of God, listen to me. I have a master plan. Why struggle to win the world? I will give it to you. It can be yours in a few moments of time. All you need to do is bend your knee and worship me. Do that, and I will withdraw my opposition. So we come back to our text. The devil saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. This wonderful panorama had to be partially mental and also visionary. The devil caused to pass in review all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. The kingdoms of the world then and the kingdoms of the world now, and the kingdoms of the world in the distant future. And if you read Dr. Luke's account in chapter 4 and 5, he says that the whole panorama was in a moment of time, or as some Greek experts has it, in an atom of time. He flicked and showed the Lord the review of the kingdoms of the world. Here was the first gigantic satanic movie performance. And that performance was in the wilderness. Flash after flash, picture after picture, event after event, century after century, invention after invention, progress after progress. All these will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Notice the devil claims the rule of the world, not merely of Palestine or of the Roman Empire. He claims the kingdoms of the cosmos were under his sway. The world system was in his grip, the cosmos that's why in the book of Daniel in chapter 10, the devil is called the prince of Persia. He still is the prince of Persia, which now is Iran. The devil is the prince of Iran. And in Ezekiel chapter 28, the devil is called the king of Tyre. And if you read Isaiah chapter 14, Satan then called Lucifer, rebelled against Jehovah, the God of heaven. And we are further told in Revelation 12, Lucifer was defeated and cast out of heaven. And Revelation chapter 12 and 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He, note, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Cast out upon this earth planet. And in verse 12 of Revelation 12, it continues, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, for he knoweth he hath but a short time. Hallelujah. <laughs> in the book of Job, in chapters 1 and 2, when Jehovah asked Satan what he was doing, he replied, 
walking up and down upon the earth. <laughs> walking up and down upon the earth. Satan is walking up and down upon our planet. And his angels are doing the same. And the Lord Jesus in John chapter 12 and John chapter 14 calls Satan the prince of this world. The prince of this world. It was a tremendous grandstand play. Satan offers to turn all the keys of the world power over to Jesus for a single act of worship. Notice carefully what the devil said. All these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Do you know the greatest thing the devil wants from God tonight is not power, but worship. Mm. And the greatest thing that Satan wants from you tonight is not mere power, but worship. Satan wants men and women to worship him. But notice what Satan said, all these things will I give thee. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ is not interested in things. He's interested in you and me. That's why he said to Pontius Pilate on the morning of his trial in John 18 and 36, my kingdom is not of this world. I have a kingdom, but it's not of this world. And the Greek word for world here is the word cosmos, which means this system of things. In other words, Pilate, you're in a system. I'm not interested in it. My kingdom is not of this system of things. And Christ continues, if it were, then would my servants fight. And a lot of God's servants ought to remember what our Lord said. We are not fighting an earthly battle. We are fighting a spiritual battle. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, if it were, then would my servants fight. The whole purpose of the Lord Jesus coming into the world was to die for our sins and to win you and me by his love. He saw you, the treasure in the field. Isn't that lovely? He saw you, the treasure in the field, and he loved you. So what does he do to have the treasure? He goes and he buys the field. And I think that's beautiful tonight. And that's why he said to Nicodemus in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And the, the word for world here is the inhabited world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But that purpose involved suffering. That purpose involved pain. That purpose involved obedience. That purpose involved blood, the shedding of blood, the giving of one's life. That's why again he declared in Matthew 20 and 28, the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Watch the word, and to give his life a ransom for many. And that's why Peter declared in 1 Peter 1 and 18, for as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and spot. The holy ambition and sacred mission of Jesus is thus appealed to at the price of recognition of the devil's primacy in the world. It was a compromise that involved the surrender of the Son of God to the world ruler of this darkness. But the temptation was threefold. And I've got your attention, and listen to me. First, to gain a temporal, not a spiritual dominion. And secondly, to gain it at once, <clears throat> and to gain it by an act of homage. <laughs> and thirdly, that homage to the present ruler of this world would make the self-constituted Messiah the vice-regent of the devil, and not of God. Satan offered my master what he offers to everyone today, the easy way. <clears throat> Satan offered my master 
what he is offering everyone today, the easy way. There's men and women listening to me tonight, and you've accepted the easy way, and you're in the clutches of the prince of darkness. There's men and women tonight, that easy way has tantalized you, and you've taken it, and tonight you're bound, and you can't get free. A shortcut to success, bought with a price tag. A shortcut to success, but with a price tag. The tag just wants the worship of the devil. Just wants the worship of the devil. We are living in a world, ladies and gentlemen, that is full of devil worshipers. Doctors, students, scientists, men of learning, worship the devil. Why do they worship the devil? Because he has offered them things. And believe it or not, he has given them things. And they've taken those things. But there's a price tag. They're lost tonight. They're lost. These men and women have given their souls to the devil. And they're lost. They have bartered their souls. And my friend tonight, I am saying to you, don't barter your soul. Yes, they literally worship him, and they have picked up the tab the devil deceitfully and cunningly has put to them. Listen to him as he talks to you. I know his rhetoric. Mm. I know the devil from I've been a boy. Mm. I know his rhetoric. Mm. Mm. You're looking at a preacher tonight who knows the power of the enemy. Mm. I know his rhetoric. Here's the way he talks. Look, I've been around a long time. I've been around a long time. Look, I control things. I control kings. I control prime ministers. I control kingdoms. I've had my sway for centuries. As for Christ, he's a myth. Christ, he's pitiable. Christ, he's a myth of the past. There's no use even thinking about him today. He only offers you a cross and a life of self-denial and discipline. Sure, one old emperor described him as the pale, miserable Galilean. And that's what one old Roman Empire described Christ as a pale, miserable Galilean. But I'm offering you the easy way. I'm offering you the easy way out. I'm offering you the shortcut to happiness. You're going to die anyhow, but you can die happy if you worship me. You will die around you with friends who love you and who love me, and you'll die with friends who I have blessed with my things that I offer you. That is the rhetoric of Satan tonight. And I know tonight that I'm talking to hearts who have heard that voice and who have yielded to that a voice. Now do you see, friend, how millions have fallen to the devil's bait, and they're caught and doomed for all eternity. Now do you see the power of that temptation? It was these very kingdoms that Jesus had come to win. But they had to be won through service and suffering and blood and death. Then every knee would bow to him, and every tongue would confess. Watch the devil. As he comes with his swift suggestion, cunningly he throws himself in line with Christ's hope. I understand you. I know why you've come. I know what's going to happen. I really understand you, Jesus. He whispers to him that there is an easier way than Calvary for winning the dominion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it really hit me. The devil would give Jesus anything to stop him going to Golgotha. Mm. Do you hear what I'm saying? The devil would give Jesus anything to stop him going to Golgotha. Mm. It's amazing. Mm. Because Golgotha would be the day and the event that would defeat the devil and purchase me forever with his precious blood. And I'm glad Jesus didn't look on me as a thing. 
And I'm glad that Jesus didn't look on you as a thing tonight. He looked on you and me as something precious. Isn't he wonderful tonight? What does God's people say? Listen to him in Mark's gospel in chapter 8 and verse 36. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give? Or what shall a man barter in exchange for his soul? What is he saying? He is saying, compare your soul to the entire world with its riches and with its treasures and with its wealth. Not one of these things, not even all of these things <clears throat> can buy your soul. Your soul is the most priceless thing that you have. I don't care what you have in the bank. I don't care what sort of car you drive. I don't care what investments you have tonight. Your soul is the most costliest thing in your life. And that's what Christ came for, to buy your soul. To make the world cost Christ his breath. Mm. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He just said, let there be, and there was. But to redeem the world, it cost Christ his blood. Isn't he a wonderful Savior tonight? And there's a wonderful and interesting thought in the Greek New Testament, especially Luke's account. And I want you to listen to me carefully here. There's a slight difference in the records of Matthew and Luke, and the differences are very suggestive. Matthew said, he was shown all the kingdoms of the world. And Luke says so too, but they use different words. The same truth is put in two ways. Matthew says, he showed them all the kingdoms of the cosmos. And the revised version in the margin draws attention to the difference. And in that margin, you will find this note, the Greek, the inhabited earth. But that is a poor rendering brothers and sisters. And it misses the thought as surely as does the word world. The Greek word does not mean the inhabited earth. It is the word okumenai. And, uh, and it's our English word economy. And it's the translation of this Greek, Greek word okumenai. So the proper translation is, now says Luke, he showed them all the kingdoms of the economy. All the kingdoms of the economies. Not only showed him the inhabited earth, not only showed him the cosmos, he showed him the economies. The devil said, I will give you all the economies of the world now and in the world that will continue. Boy, Jesus was right when he said, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? But Jesus did not come to win the cosmos or the system of things, nor to win its economies. He came to win, to woo, to love, to lift men and women and give them a place in his kingdom. What am I saying, friend? He loves you. Say, Jesus loves me. And I'm saying it tonight, friend. He loves you. He loves you. Here's something else. And we must not miss it. The tempting voice said, Fall down and worship me. And I will give you the kingdoms of the world. But had not God himself said to his chosen one in Psalm 2 and verse 5, Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. What the tempter was saying was compromise. Am I talking to a compromiser tonight? The tempter was saying compromise. Has the devil said to you, compromise? <clears throat> and friend, tonight, are you compromising? He says, come to terms with me. Don't pitch your demands so high. Don't 
get so hyped up in spiritual things. Don't get your demands so high. Compromise, compromise. Wink just a little at evil and don't question all things. Wink a little at evil and don't question all things. And then people will follow you in their hordes. Do you know what it was? It was the temptation to try to advance by retreating. I wrote that myself. It was the temptation to try to advance by retreating. And the devil has said to you, you will get on in this world if you retreat. The devil is saying you, to you, you will get on in this life if you retreat. Don't keep the commandments of God. Don't be steady in these commandments. They're getting you down. They're pulling you down. It's costing you. You'll get on in the world if you're a treat. Hold on to Christ with one hand and hold on to the world with the other. Compromise. But you know what Jesus said? No man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He said it was the temptation to try to advance by retreating, to try and change the world by becoming like the world. Mm. To try and change the world by becoming like the world. Mm. And you know that's what many denominational churches has done. Denominational churches is full of worldliness. And they're trying to change the world by being like the world. Let's mingle with them. Yes, we can mingle with them. But remember what Jesus said. You're in the world, but you're not of it. What does God's people say? There's a silence in this house while I'm talking. And that silence tonight is conviction. Because I know God is already speaking to hearts. There are men and women, and you're half-hearted. There's men and women, and your Christian life is pathetic. There's men and women here, your Christian life is pitiable. You're still trying to hold on. Really, you've got nothing. It's either all or nothing with Christ. No man can serve two masters. He will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot <coughs> serve God and mammon. And this is what Satan was trying to put to Christ at the beginning of his lovely ministry. And Christ said, no. He said, absolutely no. Back came the master's answer. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. Say him only. <laughs> Shout it out. Shout it out louder. Shout it louder. Him only. Him only. Mm. Mm. Shout thou, sir. Mm. Do you hear that, sir? Do you hear that, lady? Mm. Him only. Mm. Are you mingling with the world and the things of the world? Are you dabbling in the world? Mm. It's no good. Mm. You haven't got anything. Him only shalt thou serve. Christ was showing we never defeat evil by compromising with evil. Did you hear what I said? We never defeat evil by compromising with it. In fact, if we compromise with it, evil will ask us more. It will ask us for this. It will ask us for that. It will ask us for the other thing until we are absolutely swamped in it. Jesus said, him only shalt thou serve. He laid down the principle of the uncompromising of the Christian faith. Ladies and gentlemen, are you listening to this? Christianity can never stoop to the level of the world. Ah, pastor, you're old-fashioned. So I am. I have no apology for that. None whatsoever. Christianity can never stoop to the principles of the world. Oh, but you have to. No, I don't have to. Who says I have to? Christ says I can't. Can I hear a praise the Lord? And if you're stupid to the principles of the world, 
You're out of order, brother. You're out of order, sister. If you're stooping to the principles of the world, you're compromising with the world. You are not showing that you're a real, true, genuine child of God. The child of God stands firm, just as our Lord stood in the wilderness. True, we are in the world, but not of the world. But Christianity must lift the world to its own level. Nothing else will do. I remember many years ago, a young girl who was very enthusiastic, brilliant. She came to the Orange Hall. She was a lovely kid. And she used to pray. She used to wrap doors. And she met this fella. And she says, Pastor, he's beautiful. In fact, she says, no, he's like a big Greek god. So I says, I'll have to see this guy. And when I saw him, he's like spotty dog. <laughs> And I said to her, stand in that chair. She says, you're joking, Pa. I says, come on, stand in that chair. So she stood in the chair. And I says, now pull me up. She tried. I just pulled her down off the chair, just like that. Mm. Mm. And I says, you are giving in to the principles of the devil. He's not worth it. I don't care who he is. He's not worth it. And anyway, you want to see him. He was a dead loss. <laughs> but the, the, the same beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And everybody has their own taste. That's what the woman said when she kissed the cow. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled her off the chair. I said, you can't pull him up. And you know, brother and sister, Jesus made his decision. He decided he must never bribe man into following him. He decided that the way of sensations was not for him. He decided that there could be no compromise in the message he preached and in the faith that he demanded. And the choice and eventually meant the cross. When he said, get thee hence, Satan. For thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Christ was saying to him, I'm going to the cross. And it had to be the cross. No wonder Luke 9 and 51 says, And it came to pass, when the time was come, that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face or fixed his face to go to Jerusalem. It had to be the cross. And the cross was for me. Over 2,000 people in this great house tonight, out in the nurseries everywhere, children's church. Every one of us will stand before the great throne of judgment. Do you know how God's going to judge us? By the cross. Not how many cigarettes you smoked. Not how many sleeping partners you had. Not how many drinks you consumed. Not how much dope you took. Those are all the symptoms of sin. He will judge you by the cross. And Jesus choose the cross. He will judge you, sir. He will judge you, lady, by the cross. What his son did at the place called Calvary. I'm closing. The time is gone. When I start talking about Jesus, I, I don't see the time going in. <clears throat> I'm closing, but I must say this. This fight was unmatched. I called it the battle of the giants, but this fight was unmatched. Remember, Satan was a fallen angel, but still had many powers. But we are told in Hebrews 2 and 9, Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. But Jesus had the Word and the Spirit. And three times he declared to Satan, it is written. And three times Satan was sent away skulking. Because he overcame, I can overcome. And because he overcame, you can overcome in exactly the same way, by the word 
and by the Spirit. He came to a young man of 30 years of age. He came to him in his humiliation. Because we are told, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And he suffered the death of the cross. Isn't he a wonderful Savior? And he came to him, and my master defeated him by the word and by the Holy Spirit. If he had have defeated him as God, it would have been no example to me because I would still be weak and I would still be struggling. But he defeated him as the Son of Man and said, here's the way that you can win, Jim McConnell. Here's the way that you can win, by my word and by my spirit. Three times he said it is written, and he overcame the devil by the Holy Spirit. Isn't he a wonderful Savior? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, you can overcome. Are you a compromiser? Are you sitting on the fence? He that is not with me is against me. Have you said to the people in your office, look, I'm a Christian? Have you told your friends, look, I love the Lord Jesus Christ? Or do you mingle with them? Or do you have a drink with them? And you slip in here on Lord's Day and get a wee bit of religion? Friend, if you died tonight, you'd go to a lost eternity. I'm your best friend for telling you that. So I'm not coming back to here. Yeah, it's okay. But you'll never forget what I said. If you die tonight, you'll go to a lost eternity. Without God and without Christ and without hope in the world. Because he demands absolute surrender and he demands 100% service. He's a wonderful Savior. Isn't he worth it? He's worthy. It's another way of saying he's worthy. He's worth it. The top 20 song in heaven is, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And he's worthy tonight. Do you think he's worthy? Well, if you think he's worthy, stop doing what you're doing. If you think he's worthy, stop mixing with the world. If you think he's worthy, stop carrying on the way you're carrying on. And give him your life. And give him your heart. And serve him to the best of your ability. He's a wonderful Savior. And all God's people said, thank you for listening. Would you close your eyes? Bow your head tonight. I know God's speaking in this service. All these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. The devil has said that to you, and you have obeyed him. But Christ tonight can set you free. Christ tonight can set you free. While every head is bowed here, while every eye is closed. Where are you tonight, sir? Where are you tonight, lady? I'm standing here and I'm going to say, is there a man here? Is there a woman here? A young man, a young woman, a boy, a girl, a mom, a dad? And you know you're not right with God. Would you like to get right with God now? Would you like to get right with God tonight? And would you slip up your hand and take it down again? And let me see it. Is there a man in the service tonight who will say, Pastor McConnell, will you pray for me? I want to get right with God. If there's one tonight, would you raise your hand? There's one pointing. God bless you right down there. Thank you. There's another one right over here. Thank you. Is there another one? Quickly and quietly. Would you lift up your hand and take it down again? We will see it. And we will pray for you. Is there, an, is there another one tonight? Just quickly and quietly. Would you lift up your hand and take it down again? Is there another one? God bless you right up there. Thank you. I see your hand. You may take it down. God is speaking. Three people now have indicated <coughs> that they're not right with God, but they want to be. Is there another one tonight? Oh, you can feel the silence in this house. 
Is there another one? I know God's speaking here. Where are you, sir? Where are you, lady? Would you raise your hand and say, this is the night of decision for me. I'm going to serve him. Come with me right now. Would you lift up that hand? Where are you, sir? Where are you, lady? Where are you? Just lift up that hand. Take it down again. Can I see it right now? Where are you, friend? There's another lady. God bless you. Thank you. You may take your hand down. Is there another one? Just watching out for you. I know people are thinking here. People are under conviction. People are saying, where am I? Where do I stand? He went through that in the wilderness for you. He allowed him, <clears throat> he allowed the devil to take him to the pinnacle of the temple. He allowed the devil to take him up into an exceeding high mountain to show him all the kingdoms of the world. He allowed that. And yet he defeated them. Is there another one tonight? Four people have raised their hand. Where are you, friend? Where are you? Will you raise that hand right now? Let me see it. God's speaking in this service tonight. I know he is. I know he is. Where are you, sir? Don't die without Christ. Don't die without Christ, lady. Is there another one tonight? Where are you? Just lift up that hand. Take it down again. We will see it and pray for you. Thank you, young man. Thank you. You may take your hand down. Is there another one? Where are you? Where are you tonight? Oh, we're watching for you. Watching for you right now in this service where the Spirit of God is. Where are you? Is there another one? Where are you, friend? Five people now have responded. Where are you? Where are you in the silence of this meeting? The Spirit of God is here. We're going to sing twice over just as I am without one plea. And I want the choir to help me. I want every Christian to sing it. And if you're, if you're not sure you're safe, friend, raise your hand. Leave tonight sure. If you don't know where you are tonight, friend, raise your hand. Because before you leave, you'll know where you are. If you don't know where you are, what's going to happen to you? If you're not sure that you're saved, what's going to happen to you? If you're dabbling in the world and the things of the world, what's going to happen to you? Will you lift that hand? Five people now have raised their hand. What does God's people say? We're waiting on you as we sing it then. Lift up that hand then. Come on. Just as I... Is there another one tonight? Can I see that hand? Is there another one tonight? And is there another one? Is there another one? Hi. I'm looking up in the gallery tonight. I know God's speaking up there. Is there a man, is there a woman who would be honest and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to get right with God. Would you lift that hand right now? Where are you, friend? Up in that gallery. Up in the sides. Right now, in this ground floor, my eyes is raking the whole place. Five adults have raised their hand. Is there another one tonight? God bless you, lady. I see your hand. Thank you. Is there another one? Quickly. Is there another one? We're watching for you. This is the second time we're singing it. Six people now have raised their hand. Are you ready? Just as I... Come on, where are you, friend? Come on, where are you? Was... Come on, lift it up right now, we'll see it. Um, is there one more person? Come on, sir, come on, lady. Six people now. Hi. 
I'm going to ask, is there a backslider here tonight? I'm not prolonging this appeal. Is there a backslider? Is there a man that's drifted? The world had lifted up its gauzy pleasures to you and you've drifted away. Come on, sir. Come on, lady. God has brought you here. Would you lift your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to come back to God. Is there a backslider? Looking up on that great gallery tonight, is there a backslider up there? Where are you, sir? Where are you, lady? Looking down on this ground floor, where are you? There's a lady. Thank you. God bless you. Is there another one? Quickly, quickly. Come on, where are you? We're waiting for you, waiting for you to come home. Seven people now have responded. Oh, I'm waiting for you. We'll sing it once more and we'll call it a night then. The appeal is two minutes old right now. This is the last time we're singing it. Come on. Just as I... Where are you, friend? I know the struggle that's on down there. Oh, there's a struggle. Come on, where are you? Come on, friend, where are you? Oh, we're waiting for you. Come on, up the sides here. I come. Spirit of God is here. Is there a man here who would be honest with me? And I know there's conviction in this meeting, old-fashioned conviction, because even God's people are convicted. Is there a man here tonight? Is there a woman here tonight? While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, would say, Pastor, will you pray for me? I don't know where I am. Would you have the courage and honesty to lift your hand? We'll see it. Pray for you. Is there somebody here in the grip of the devil? God bless you, sir. Is there another one? In the grip of the devil, lift that hand. Is there another one? Come on, is there another one? Just lift that hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm in the grip of Satan. Is there another one tonight? The Spirit of God is in this great house. Is there another one tonight? Quickly and quietly. Oh, Pastor, please sing it once more. We'll call it a night. Nine people now have surrendered. I think there's maybe ten, somebody singling ten. We'll sing it again, and then I'm finishing just as I am. Christian pray, and I believe God's speaking to hearts. Come on. Just as. Is there one more person? One more, I'm asking. Come on, is there a family? Where are you? Where are you? Is there a family tonight? Will you come? Come on, sir. Just lift that hand, we'll see it. Is there another one? There's another one upstairs. God bless you. I don't see how there's another one. God bless you. Thank you. Is there another one? There's another one down there. People are pointing. God bless you, lady. Oh, is there another one? Oh, God speaking. You see, there's a struggle going on here. You can feel the struggle, like the struggle in the wilderness. There's another one that Deacon's pointing. I don't see the hand. He sees it. God bless you. I don't see that hand. He's pointing. God bless you. It's not wonderful. What does God's people say? Well, let's sing it once more and we'll pronounce the benediction. I'm just waiting on God moving here. I think it's 13, is it? 13? 14. What does God's people say? We're just waiting on you. We'll sing it once more, and I'm not going to say any more, but I know God's speaking here, and there's struggles going on. And I'm going to tell you something else. There's struggles going on with Christians about their relationship with God and what's happening to them. 
because you're drifting in the world and the things of the world. Are you ready then? Come on. Just as I So one more waiting on you. Oh, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on you tonight. We're waiting on you. Is there any more? Before I pray tonight. I come. Let me pray before you repeat my prayer. Father, you see the struggle that's going on in this congregation tonight. And we sense the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, give people deciding grace. Don't let them go home tonight until they trust thy lovely Son. Give them victory tonight. Set them free. Let them see the devil and his gaudy pleasures will disappear and it will disappear in the light of eternity. So Lord, speak to hearts and let your lovely name be glorified. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. What does God's people say? Put your hands out. Are you ready? Let's pray this prayer. Fourteen people. Are you ready? Father, I come to thee in the precious and worthy name of your dearly beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for his coming into the world to die for me, a guilty, hell-deserving sinner. Save me for time and eternity. And from this night, lead me on with thyself. Keep me in the hollow of your hand. And give me strength for every day that I may serve you and be found faithful. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said, it's two minutes off, 20 past eight. And I'm asking those dear people that raised their hand, will you go into the McGee room? I know there's a big crowd, but please, it's on the left-hand side as you go out. Please, there was men and women raised their hands tonight. Please go into the room. Give us your name. Give us your address. We have two pastors, Pastor David, Pastor Mark, and we have brother and sister Bobby Young and Van there who will help you and encourage you. Give us, give us your name and address and we'll give you some literature that the Lord will abundantly bless you. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Next Sunday night, God gave me a lovely word for Sunday morning on Solomon and Sheba. I have four sermons on that story. But he gave me a fresh message, totally different. I got it on Friday afternoon, and I finished writing it yesterday. He's given me another message for next Sunday night. And you know, I've been looking at the, his, the historic channels on Sky, and they're trying to whitewash Judas Iscariot. And next Sunday night, I'm going to preach on the mystery of Judas Iscariot. Who was he? Very few people know about him. Who was he? Why did he betray the Lord? Why did the Lord even choose him to be one of the twelve? What's the mystery of all this? What happened? Come along next Sunday night. Bring your friends with you. The mystery of Judas Iscariot. That's next Sunday night. It's a long time since I preached on Judas, but I've been meditating on him. And Pastor Shaw on Friday night was given a wee word talking about him. And you know, he just stirred my thoughts. And this coming Lord's Day night, I'm going to speak on the mystery of Judas Iscariot. Say, praise the Lord. It's 20 past eight. Go upstairs, get a cup of tea. And you that have trusted the Lord, after you go into the room, go upstairs and get something. It'll help you and strengthen you in the days that lie ahead. We have a wonderful Savior. Say, praise the Lord. Say it again. He's lovely. 
I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Sing it as a benediction, then I'll pronounce it. Are you ready? Come on. I love you, Lord. feel led to say this as we go home. There are people here under conviction. I'll be standing out there. Will you come to me? Come to Pastor George, Pastor Norman. Come to Pastor Michael up there, Pastor Mark, Pastor David. They're all there. Pastor David McClure down there. Come to us. Don't leave. I have a witness that this is the last chance that God has given some man, some woman tonight. And they've made many professions. I've made many. This is the last. Get yourself right with God. Get away from the power of the devil. And all God's people said. Amen. We're in an old-fashioned meeting tonight. Can I hear a praise the Lord? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide upon us until Jesus comes. Amen. God bless you.